Welcome back to the Windy City Wire podcast. My name is Sam Tanaglia. Glad to be back uh, with you today. Today is uh, March 18th, and I'm glad to be joined today by Ryan Wanzowitz. Ryan, it's great to have you back on the show. And we had some sad move. We had some sad news this weekend. I want to preface this. Uh, we're going to go over that really quick. And this is our March Madness show, so we're going to jump into that after. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, glad to be back. Uh, I think I've been, might be like six months I haven't been on, so glad to be back. I love March Madness, one of my sports sweet spots, at least in my opinion. So glad to be on here to be able to talk about it. Yeah, Ryan's is a big, uh, big college sports guy. He's our NFL draft analyst, our expert here in house. Um, but yeah, he, he's going to give us his rundown for the March Madness tournament. We all got some notes, some things to know that uh, it's good to bring out on a Monday and in video format so you can actually see what we're talking about, um, just to give you some hints and tricks when you're creating your bracket too. So, but first of all, some big news came out on Saturday. Justin Fields is currently a, or now, he, he's now a Pittsburgh Steeler. Uh, huge. The return was a sixth round pick, potential uh, fourth round pick, but it's very unlikely. Um, the devastation was had at Halligan's between James Marisi and myself, Halligan's Bar in Lincoln Park. Um, but it's a sad moment. We know what we're doing now. We're picking Caleb. But Ryan, do you have any thoughts on the uh, trade, the move? Um, yeah, I mean, I always liked... Uh, Justin Fields, when he was coming out of Ohio State, um, I always liked him as a prospect. And, I mean, I, I said it in a, a, a tweet, but what the Bears did to him was egregious. And uh, the way they, the way I look at it is they, you know, had the perfect opportunity to sculpt. They got, like, the best clay in the world, you know, to sculpt the best sculpture, like, you know, Leonardo uh, da Vinci would uh, when making the David and they just completely messed it up into a a lump of nothing um, by you know throwing him into the fire as rookie year especially giving us the Browns um, you know Matt Nagy calling the plays that year and then bringing in Eberflus and Luke Getze in his second year um, and then retaining those guys his third year and not giving him any weapons until really his, his third year was, you know, a big, big problem and mistake. And, um, yeah, now I feel like they're just kind of, I, I understand the direction they're going, but they really just screwed it up for him. And that's, um, you know, it makes me angry at, at that team. So. I mean, Caleb Williams, I guess I'm still in the, you know, draft is a month away. I'm still in the process of getting through my evaluations on him. So I don't have a firm uh, decision yet, but uh, I do think he's talented on the field, but I think he has a lot of character issues that are giving me a lot of red flags that I'm worried about. So, um, but I can go more into that um, our, on our pre-draft show. So, yeah. So. Fields is gone. It was a tough trade. Everyone wanted more. Ever, we I think last week we were talking. You could possibly get a one or a two for him. Obviously, I guess that was off the table. So Fields is gone. Um, but totally agree. They didn't give him any weapons. But now Caleb Williams gets to walk into a situation with Keenan Allen, who we recently traded for last week too. Keenan Allen's going to be on a one-year deal, possibly get an extension. And then you also have DJ Moore, who's been great. They could take another wide receiver at nine in this draft. Um, so Caleb is going to get a great situation to walk into. And a lot of people just think 
the Bears did Justin Fields dirty. And I would agree. It said they tra- change play callers every single year. It seemed like Luke Getzey didn't have his head turned or screwed on right probably two, both years he was there. Um, so, yeah, tough situation to be in, but it's Caleb Williams' time, I guess. Yep. But, I mean, if you if you can't succeed – as a franchise with Justin Fields as a quarterback, then I don't know how you can with without changing like the ownership or a big overhaul, then I don't know how you can succeed with anyone with his potential and his, you know, production, just his overall body of work. If you can't win with that, then I don't think you can win with anyone. So Yeah, well, I mean only time will tell. We'll see. We'll see you. Yep. See you. So Bears, tough one, but yeah. It happened. We can move on, I guess. It's going to be tough to move on, and I'm sure if Caleb Williams does bad or poorly, uh, the fans are not going to be happy. Let's see what yep. happens. Yep. All right, well, we'll jump into March Madness right now. This is huge. Brackets came out, came out yesterday. Uh, we're just going to talk men's bracket this year. Um, so we got all our notes, as we said. We got our – Brian's got some tips and tricks. Uh, that he's seen over the past few years. Uh, and we'll just, I got the bracket pulled up here. I'm going to go to it right now. I'll start sharing my screen and we can just run through these. So yeah, I will give the audience some uh, background on why I'm a credible source uh, to be uh, featured on this episode. Uh, so actually the first, I won my first bracket when I was in seventh grade. So I was 11 years old. I picked UConn and Kemba Walker, uh, that run. I, I saw, I was captivated by him, um, in like the, the big East tournament. And then, uh, he, that Madison square garden game where he crossed up the guy on pit and drained the three. Um, I just rode with him after that and they went all the way. It was my dad's work bracket. So this is like a office of adults that, uh, I was a seventh grader and beat everyone out. So did that and then uh i believe i won in 2021 uh that for some reason i'm shaking on it was covid that was kind of weird and then i did win a 50 plus group in 2022 so with kansas so i I do have some wins under my belt but i do have a lot of big flops as well i'm not perfect um but i do feel like i have a good feel for how some of these teams go and just kind of how the tournament works. I, I think I have a good feel for it after doing it for over a decade. So, Well, good to know. I think the viewers are going to be glad to hear a little, uh, little information from you. It's good to have you on. I, were you on last year? You got to remind me. I don't, I don't think I was, no. Well, it's glad to have you here this week. Also, Owen, James, Kevin, I let you guys know two weeks in advance we're having a show tonight. Yes, uh, things changed last minute. So glad to have Ryan on. Ryan's a... Uh, Guy who's always going to show up for you. So, all right. That's right. That is odd percent right. All right. First game, start up in the East. Stetson and UConn. I have game notes here. Big wins for Stetson at UFC versus Charlotte and lost to Houston since the UNLV. UConn is overall the number one seed in the whole tournament. They have lost to Kansas and Creighton, but they've beaten Marquette three times. It's going to be Newton, Spencer, and Caravan for UConn. And those guys play 32 minutes a game, and UConn is a force. Do you see this game going anywhere different than just a straight UConn win? I do not. Uh, I think UConn uh, is a buzzsaw. Uh, and uh, Sam and I talked off camera, off camera, and I'm not going to reveal all my picks for, for every single game, but I'm just going to give – what I'm feeling right now, um, I guess I could start it with this round of 64 game. But yeah, UConn's a buzzsaw, and I see them, I mean, I think they'll make yeah, at least the lead eight. After that, I'm not sure, but um, I don't like the fact that they won the Big East tournament, so they're not that much of an underdog as last year. Like They kind of have a target on their back, so there's going to be a lot of pressure. Um, couple key pieces from last year are gone and i don't know i just 
you know, they're the overwhelming favorite to win. Uh, I think when I logged into the tournament challenge today, the, the they had the highest percentage uh, for most people picked them to to win it all, and I just don't see it happening. It's so hard to repeat. I know Florida did it back in oh six oh seven. Uh, um, I just think it's really hard to do. I don't see them going all the way, but I do like them to get pretty far. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I think I uh, I'm with you. I mean, this is a pretty easy game. I think ninety nine point nine percent of the population is going to be picking UConn. There might be a few Stetson grads out there who are going to take their team, but we're going to go UConn to start it out. All right, next game. This is cool. this is going to be a good one. Both really good offensive teams. So I got FAU. So this is a majority returning team from last year that also went to the Final Four. John L. Davis is shooting 50% from the field and 43% from three for FAU. And they have wins versus Arizona, Texas A&M, but with losses to Illinois and Memphis. Northwestern has Boo Booey and Barnheiser. They're both leaders and the guards play strong for Northwestern. They are ranked, Northwestern is 169th on offense overall in scoring and 86th in defense. So they also have pretty good defense too. This is going to be, I think, a high scoring game. Um, Do you have anyone that you're thinking in this FAU Northwestern game? I think I'll be close, but I'm going to roll with Northwestern just because of the presence of Boo Booey and um, what they did last year and i think just having a, an experienced guard is is good um and yeah i think kind of like fau kind of had their magic last year and i don't i don't see them i think northwestern will will get it done and knock them out so that's that's who i'm picking yeah this is a tough one for me um i think i think it's gonna be very close but I do like FAU in this, just the fact that, well, I mean, both teams have a lot of returning guys, but give me John L. Davis. FAU has been a really good team this whole year. I guess they're not as high as they wish they were. Uh, they had a really high ranks earlier in the season, like at the AP poll or whatever it is. Um, that's probably football. But yeah, I think I'm rolling with FAU here. Just I, as an Illini guy, I guess I can't pick Northwestern. Yeah, that, that's understandable. I'll give them a, a hometown hometown discount as well. That's true. Uh, yeah, but Boo Boo is sure is good. He did play well last year in the tournament too. So I yeah. could I could see myself being wrong here. This is going to be a fun game. We're going to be watching it at over under on three twenty two eleven fifteen a.m. This will be what. Probably the first game. That'll yeah, what about, for sure. We get there, so that'll be great. Awesome. All right. Uh, we'll say Northwestern here. Boo booey. Give the hometown gift discount. All right. Next up, San Diego State, another Final Four team from last year, versus UAB, the Dragons. So my notes here: SDU has Jordan Ledi, twenty-one points a game. Uh, and they are 150th ranked scoring on offense, 38th in defense. SDSU has wins versus Gonzaga, Utah State twice. But UAB has Yaxel Lendeber, Lendeborg, sorry, uh, is averaging 14 and 10 and a half per game. UAB is a little bit stronger on, or they're much stronger on offense than they are defensively. They are 71st ranked on offense. 272nd on defense. So this is a, a, another good U, U, UDSU team. They played well this year. It's a 5 12 matchup. Who do you got here? Yeah, those always get a little tricky uh, with these 5 12s. Um, definitely a chance for an upset with every one of the matchups. Uh, but I do like San Diego State. Um, even though I just said that FAU had their magic last year, I do like uh, San Diego State here because they're 
uh, just a more, I don't know, they play in a better conference than, than the Owls do. And uh, I think I like their coach better. Uh, I think he has some experience, but um, I will probably have them winning one game. I don't think I'll have them have San Diego State winning more than one, though. But I do like them in this game. Yeah, me too. I think San Diego State's just a little bit better ranked totally than UAB. Their experience, I would keep take that too. But yeah, it's good. I think this is going to be another. I, this might be close. If, out of all the five twelves, this might be close. But yeah, I think I'm going SDSU too. So we'll go with them here. Watch out for Jane Ledee and the Aztecs. SDSU is on the board with a win. Now moving into to Auburn and Yale. This game. Auburn has John Broom with 16 points a game and eight and a half, eight point three rebounds per game. They're strong on offense and defense. Auburn is 13th ranked on offense, 71st on defense. Uh, Yale, Danny Wold, the setter, he's leading the team at scoring at 14 and a half a game, well, almost grabbing almost 10 with rebounds. And then their ranks are 113th on offense, 42 on D. Uh, this is a good Auburn team with Bruce Pearl. What do you got here? Yeah, I'm not certain on how I'll go yet, but I do just some hints. Um, yeah, Auburn looks looks great. But these Ivy League teams have a way of, of busting some brackets. Last year was Princeton over Arizona. Uh, I think Harvard, that was maybe been like five, six years ago. They won one or two games um who else uh, i think someone upset cal when, when jalen brown was on that team i think and they lost a, an ivy league uh but I, I might be getting that wrong but ivy league teams do tend to win here and there so just keep that in mind when you're filling this out good point yeah i think it's just a strong auburn team and if we could see a auburn illinois matchup Later on, I, I just colors match up. Let's go with the colors. But yeah, I mean, watch out for those uh, teams like Princeton, Yale, Harvard, whatever they come in. Brown. Yeah, never know. But I say I'm going with Auburn here. Yale barely made it into the tournament. The buzzer beater. Got to keep. Go with Bruce Pearl and his resume in the tournament. I know it's not great, but his experience as a coach. So they make the I'll final four uh, five years ago. So say that again, sorry. They did make the final four five years ago um, when I was in Minnesota. Uh, but I think they had a couple of bad losses uh, post COVID, I believe. So sure. It's a game to watch. Maybe I'll flip that later on down the road, but like Auburn. This game, BYU and Duquesne. Duquesne's first time in that tournament in a long time. BYU is led by Jackson Robinson with 14 a game. Shoots the three ball very well and gets defensive rebounds at a high rate. 20th ranked on offense, 108 on defense. Duquesne is led by Day Day Grant. And he scores 17 points a game, but he also it's also under 40% a game. They are 246th ranked on offense, 33rd on defense. So they got some defense to work with. Um it's another interesting game. Uh but just the offense for just uh for Duquesne I need to go with BYU in this situation. You like BYU? I do. I mean, just 200. If I if my stats are wrong, they're 246th ranked on offense. Duquesne is. So. Okay, I did not, not know that. I just know that it's been a long time since they were in the tournament. And, I, and their head coach used to coach LeBron James at some point in high school. So, uh, and they're on a hot streak. So, um, that always plays in the tournament keep that in mind but um looks like on paper BYU would be the better team here yeah I, 
it's tough. I mean, I'd love to see Duquesne win. It'd be great. But I just think it's I, th I just kind of went a little bit chalky in this first East bracket or this region. So yeah, I'm going B BYU. That offense just scares me if they are. I, I, I can fact check myself. Um, if they're that low ranked scoring on offense, uh, I worry about it. So I'm going BYU here. If you want me to flip it to Yale. No, that. go ahead. This is like I said, I haven't finalized my picks yet. I'm just offering. This uh, is our shared I, bracket. We'll I see think, how it does. This is kind of how I'm feeling right now, but I could uh, just keep a note that I might flip some of these picks later. Yes, no worries. All right. And all our listeners out there, viewers, please take all these picks at discretion to use your own judgment, do your own yes. research. We are not I do what we know. I was. Yep. I want to think I am, but we aren't. Yep. All right. Illinois and Moorhead State. Tough matchup for the Illini. The Illini have Terrence Shannon and Marcus Domas. They're the Big Ten champions, the Turdy champions. But they don't have that great of a defense, and they need to stop giving the ball away and actually get some defensive rebounds. Limit offensive rebounds. That seemed to be the problem this weekend. I was watching all the games, um, and Moorhead State's pretty good team on defense. They're the eighth-ranked defense uh, to Illinois' 11th-ranked offense. Uh, but Moorhead State, you got to watch out for Riley Minix. He shoots 54% with 21.8 points per game and also over a steal game, too. So if they if they can force turnovers, get Shannon in trouble early with or foul trouble early, start making some shots. This might be a tough look, tough matchup for uh, Illinois. What do you think about this one? Uh, I think I think they probably will win this game, but I I don't have them going past the round of sixty four. I think they'll win a one one game and beat out just because. Brad Underwood, uh, again, I look at coaches and their past performances, and he has a terrible ledger um, since he's been coach of Illinois. I mean, uh, lost to Loyola Chicago. I remember that. It was 2021, I think. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure Illinois was a Big Ten champs that year, too. Uh, so, and I don't like Adam. Terrence Shannon uh, has some off-court issues and uh, – I don't think uh, I think the bad guy will get. I think Karma will come around and, and bite them, uh, and bite him. Um, and I just don't like. I just don't don't get a good vibe from him as a person. So. Yeah, I think uh, just based off his on his off court issues, would be suspended. He had a restraining order on him this year during the season. Um, I think this could be a public. Uh, Public is going to pick Moorhead State to upset Illinois here. Um, just based on their strong play. And just if Shannon does bad, he doesn't score like over 30 points like he did this weekend, it might be a little bit tough for U of I to win. Uh, I'm just being frank there and honest. So it's going to be an interesting one, but give me the Illini. Got it. It's got to be one win or else this team is atrocious. It's going to be bad if it happens. Yeah, I mean, I just, like, I don't really trust Brett Underwood more than I don't like Terrence Shannon. So, uh, I just think Underwood, I uh, think he's a choker, so. Yep, no, I agree. All right, moving into Washington State, Drake, uh, take a look here. Washington State, they are going to go a little bit quicker here. We don't have too much time. I want to get through as much of this as possible. Uh, just going to go. Washington State is 155th ranked offense, 43rd on defense. Drake has Tucker DeVries. He's averaging over 20 a game, but Drake is not a great defensive team, uh, but they do limit second chances. They are the 34th offensive ranked team and 127th on defense. Uh, do you have any strong favors toward Drake or Washington? I do like 
I do like Drake. I think they got uh, uh, they got bounced uh, in the first round last year, but there was a close game. I do like talk, Tucker DeVry. And a note from this, they shot almost 37% from three. Uh, so I think that, that's pretty good. And um, I, don't know, I like Tucker DeVry to maybe take them some places. So that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, apologies for my mispronunciation there. But yes, Tucker DeVries. He looks, he's looking good, and it's a good offense for them. Uh, I also have Drake here. It's a tough one, but I got Drake. Because Washington State came out of nowhere this year. They were not expected to win the Mountain West. Yep. Yep. All righty. Moving on, Drake. Any questions or thoughts about not taking Iowa State this game? Uh, no, but I... I am cautious of them because I know they are known chokers as well in the past. I remember they, uh, one time they were a two seed, this was maybe five, six years ago, and I think they lost in either the first or second round. So uh, I'm very wary of, of the Cyclones, let's put it that. But I think they should win this game against the Jack Rabbits. Yeah, I think so too. Just the way they played uh, versus Houston on Saturday. Beat them by 30 in the Big 12 championship. Uh, they're hot right now. Maybe there's a little uh, fatigue going on. But, yeah, we're all on Iowa State in the first round. All right, we'll move down here to the west. We'll go North Carolina and Howard or Wagner. Do we have any yeah, questions about changing? North to... Carolina, you can book them. We're moving on. Totally. All right. Moving into Michigan State and Mississippi State. Any thoughts on this one? I got uh I got Michigan State here. They're led by I, I Michigan State too. It, when but, Izzo, when Michigan State's like a lower seed, like in the nine, eight, nine, seven range, I mean, you know, they norm they almost always win the first game. So I think it's just Izzo and uh I will be picking Michigan State in this game. Yeah, I will too. As I'll get down to the stats here while I go through mine. So yeah, Michigan State. He played. They played tough defense, led by seniors, uh, Hoggard, Walker, but they uh, or Hogger and Walker, but they struggle with free throws. Uh, could be a tough one in the tournament, but I do agree they will take this one. Mississippi State's lost five of their last seven. Um, they're strong on defense, but they struggle to take care of the ball, too. Um, yeah, I think Izzo gets this one. And he, as a lower seed, he, I think he wins like 63% of the matchups. Yeah, he's he's money when he's a lower seed. So yep. I will be picking them. Mm -hmm. All right. Michigan State versus North Carolina. That'll be a good matchup. All right. St. Mary's versus Grand Canyon. This game. I can't wait to watch this game. I was betting on Grand Canyon all this Friday. Oh, this was a night game, okay? So we'll be, uh, we won't be together for this one, but um, this will be a late, late uh, Friday night game in Friday game Washington. Um, St. Mary's is another really good March team. Um, they've consistently at least win the round of sixty four, but I know a lot of people are hyping up. Grand Canyon a little bit, so um, I just know St. Mary's normally always does well March, but they do have a tough matchup with uh, Grand Canyon. They do, yeah. Grand Canyon, it's their third straight tournament. As you saw, Tyon Grant Foster has 19.8 a game. We're already down to 10 minutes in the stream. Well, we'll speed it up. Thanks, Zoom, as always. But yeah, um, St. Mary's, they were the West Coast Conference champion, and they've only lost once since Christmas. It's This is going to be a really good game. They're both good on offense. It's going to be tough. I probably will put money on Grand Canyon just for the fun of it, but I am going St. Mary's here. Would you agree? Yeah, you can put you can put St. Mary's. Okay, sounds good. All right, Alabama and Charleston. Any thoughts here? We'll just run quick. Uh, yeah, watch. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick Charleston in this game. I think Alabama. They're uh, 
on on the ropes a little bit. Uh, they're shook, shook up a little bit, um, rattled is the word I'm looking for. So I think I, this is a 13. This is probably my only 13 over four I'll have, but I'm going to have Charleston winning. Yeah, no, I agree. I have Charleston too. They play a 10-man rotation. They take care of the ball and they just make their threes. Uh, yeah, I mean, Alabama's good. They're the first ranked offense in the league, but it seems like they always choke in March. That's just me, but yeah, I like Charleston here. All right, moving on with Charleston, New Mexico, Rich <laughs> I Petito, don't really have... and Clemson. What do yeah, you think? I, I'm probably going to pick New Mexico just because of I think Clemson barely snuck in, and I don't know it's Patino's kid, so um, I think he knows something about winning in March. So yeah. totally agree. Mountain West champs. Uh, this was the Mountain West champs. Washington State was the Pac-12 champs for some reason. Um, but yeah, uh, also, fun fact, New Mexico also has Eddie House and Jamal Mashburn's kids. So if you want to go past NBA stars, new kids, go New Mexico. Baylor, Colgate. Colgate's been a familiar face in the tournament the last few years. Yeah, I do. Uh, I like Baylor here, though. Scott Drew was very... Uh, experienced veteran coach won the championship, you know, three years ago. I think he's he should be able to win this one. Totally. Yep. On with Baylor, Dayton, Nevada. This might be a good one. Uh, Dayton's efficient offense, and Nevada is just a well rounded team. What do you think here? Yeah, I think Nevada is kind of a, a loose cannon wild card team. Um, where they're they're gonna blow Dayton out or they're gonna lose. So I might. I'm my, I'm right now I'm rolling with Dayton here, uh, just because I think Nevada is kind of like a hot shot, like, as I just said. Um, but I think Dayton's kind of the safer pick. Yeah, I agree. Um, but Dayton, Arizona, Long Beach State, Long you can Beach pick Arizona, State. but um, Arizona are massive, massive chokers. Over, you know, doing this for close to 15 years. The team I see choke the most are the Arizona Wildcats. Um, they always, always choke at some point, and they're always a high seed too. So I'm probably going to have Dayton beating them. Yeah, I kind of like that too. Just give me some Ohio. But Let's go Ohio. Don't don't trust Arizona. You, don't you trust. Can, you can Word trust. Me. Don't trust them. All right, Houston Longwood. We're in the South region now. Yeah, you can put put Houston. They should win. Houston. You got Nebraska and Texas Tech. Are you going to? Are oh, you I do like. I, I do like Tomanaga. Yeah, because of him, I I think Nebraska is going to win. Yeah, it's a toss up for me, uh, but I like Tomanaga too, so I'll probably take Nebraska. All right, uh, five twelve Wisconsin. James Madison. James Madison is thirty one and three on the year. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna pick James Madison. I think they're they're lethal right now. So uh I like the upset here. Yep, me too. Like that one. Vermont and Duke. Vermont is also a good team. Um, and I don't really like Filipowski, and Vermont also has won 19 of its last 20 games. Do you like Duke or Vermont here? Uh another I'm I'm picking Duke here, but keep an eye on this. It could be Another 13 over four surprise. Um, but I generally don't like Duke. I don't think they have a very good team. So, yeah, I won't have them going far this year. I agree. I agree. Down to five minutes here. Texas Tech, NC State. What are we thinking? NC State, they're hot. I'm going to roll with them. Uh, I like kind of their, they're the underdogs a little bit. Um, so I'll be picking them. Yeah, me too. NC State, I was another team I was betting on all weekend. Paid off. Kentucky and Oakland. Do you think the Oakland yeah, can, of uh, Michigan, can they pull it off? Kentucky. Uh, I think they should get the job done. Yep, me too. Florida or Boise State or Colorado? Florida. They are a March, another one, one of the, the March teams I've noticed throughout the years, they always do well in the tournament to win at least one or two games. So I will be picking Florida. I kind of like Boise State. I feel like Boise State was underranked here. Um, okay. But 
I, yeah, I think I'm going Boise State. If Boise State makes it, I'm taking Boise. But yeah, Florida is a good team. I think they lost to in the, the tourney, the their conference tourney. But um, that'll be a good game. Looking forward to that. Marquette and Western Michigan. Marquette should win here, but I think I'm gonna have Florida beating them. I they're not they're not a big dog as I like to. Uh, call some of these teams, and they're just not one of the big boys, and they I think they will end up losing early. So Yeah, watch out for Tyler Kolek. He might be out for that game, too. Uh, if he is, I'm going Western Kentucky. Also, I think I'm just going Western Kentucky outright. They play fast, and they put up points. I like yeah, them. that's not a bad pick. Nope, but I like Florida, too, in the second round. All right, Purdue. You can pick them. Uh, everyone's talking about their redemption arc. But they are also – they're the number two biggest chokers I've ever seen after Arizona. Um, so I will have them out probably after the after one game. Yeah. All right. Utah State, um, TCU. I like TCU. I think Same. Utah State's overrated. Yep. Uh, Gonzaga, McNeese. Is McNeese, everyone's talking about McNeese because of Will Wade. Uh, I think Gonzaga. I like Gonzaga. Yeah, I like Gonzaga here too, but it's, it's going to be a tough one for them. Kansas-Stanford. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Sanford wins because of all the Kansas other injuries. Yeah, I'm taking Sanford too, uh, if you are. Uh, but yeah, I like I don't trust Kansas this year. Go yeah. Sanford, Oregon, and South Carolina. I like Oregon. They're another one of the March team. They always seem to do well in the tournament. So, um, I'm picking Oregon here. Yeah, me too. Creighton and Akron. Akron barely got into the tournament. They got very, very lucky. Yeah, I think Creighton will win. Um, I kind of like them this year, but I'm yeah, not sure how far I'll have them going. I like Greg McDermott, good coach. Seems like it's always a strong team out there in the Big East. Weird. Uh, but Texas and Virginia as a 10 seed, I, this is one of their lower seeds in the last few years. Yeah, I think this is destined for the Rick Barnes game, which would be Texas versus Tennessee. And uh, I like Texas to make it to the sweet 16 actually so all right well i'm gonna do that too all right we got one minute just let's run through it as fast as we can yeah like i said uh uconn i like until i'll probably have them in the final four um yeah. auburn yeah i like them too uh illinois i don't trust so you can put whoever but you can yeah i'm doing illinois. it i'm doing I it like, i think iowa state is gonna fall soon so i'm going with drake yep but you can put drake again you can put illinois that's fine okay all right down here north carolina oh. uh st mary's i like them yep uh baylor i think we'll get the job done and like i said i'm picking dayton here well cool. texas creighton should get it done okay uh gonzaga watch out watch out for them uh because even though they're a lower seed, that might get them farther, but they, they're not a big dog either because uh, they play in a bad conference. So um, same thing with Houston. I know we're running out of time, but I don't trust Houston either. Or like I already said Purdue. So Yeah. Okay. So if you had a team like that you really like just this whole year, who would it be? Um, I don't know. I like North Carolina is pretty – I think they're pretty legit, so watch out for them. All right, good final thoughts. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Winning City Wire podcast. Wish you luck on your brackets. Have fun. Yeah. Good luck, everyone.